Okay, so today I'm going to make a, uh, a video log of my custom-built shelter. It's a temporary shelter, and it's just built for uh, just a season. And uh, I want to go over some of the things that, uh, or how I built it, really. And it's actually quite simple. And uh, I couldn't find anything online that uh, explicitly described how to build a custom shelter with an open end for the back end of the house. So basically this shelter just shields wind, snow, rain, and sleet off the back stoop. And I also made an addition, which is a dog run, um, which at the time I had a dog, uh, <laughs> rest in peace now. He's, uh, he was old and it just got to the point where he was having trouble walking. And I said to myself, I says, you know, with the snow and the ice coming, you know, we're in the snow belt. So it would have been bad for him to slip on the ice, uh, you know, at four o'clock in the morning when he needed to go out or something like that. So I says, you know what, let me build a temporary shelter. So I says, you know, what can I build or what can I buy that would actually, um, be cost effective in getting the back end of the house, the entrance to the back end of the house, um, covered. You know, I looked into uh, corral covers, I looked into carports, and everything that I was looking at, it was going to cost anywhere between oof, like $1,500 for both shelters because I need something for the outside of the house, and then I needed to connect it uh, over here where the dog run is. And I have uh, a fake, fake grass, I guess. Oh, it's just synthetic turf, really. And I uh, wanted to make something where he would be able to be doing his business from the outside, from the inside of the shelter, and coming back in, in, into the house without any problem. So, what I did was I uh, went online and started to do some research on um, design theories and stuff like that. Whoop over here and I decided to uh, just build it just get some wood and research into vinyl tarps and cover it with uh, with a vinyl tarp and uh, I'll show you how I uh, did everything here it's mostly a video log for myself because when I take this down it's not probably not going back up everything is temporary everything is screwed together so all I need to do is just unscrew and it all comes down so this is what I did this is a uh, a billboard uh, a, a reused or remnant piece of uh, of billboard tarp which was very cost-effective for a temporary application because when it comes off I basically fold it off for something else or I just basically throw it out unfortunately but you know, there's no other real further use that I have for it, except for maybe building another shelter. But um, this shelter is 10 feet by 12 feet, so it's 120 square feet inside. And the size of the tarp is... Oh, it's backwards. It's 12, 12, uh, 12 feet by 24 feet, roughly. And... Um, basically just wrapped it like you would do with like a present so it was like start at the bottom here right you screw in all the screws boop, 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 all the way up kind of like what you do with the hull of a ship you know you just keep screwing 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 they will hold everything together on one side and then you just flip it over on this side and then cut the excess on the other side and obviously cut your uh, cut the uh, the entrance for your inside or the act for the exit rather and do the same thing here just screws and screws and screws and then basically just wrap up how you would wrap a, uh, a gift or a present and then cut out your doors so I made this door here it's a pretty cool door I mean for what it is for a temporary purpose just again any remnant pieces that I had I just made the door here I made a, a gasket with uh, with tape for the door jam. So you know, if we get any snow, ice, 
you know, obviously I did not use a level. This is definitely not built to code. Not, not to code at all. But uh, here's the inside of it, which is actually really cool. It actually cuts down the wind. And then uh, there's a door. There's my chimney, which is really cool about the chimney, actually. The chimney I put on a cart, and the cart actually fits through the doorway, so I'm able to sit here inside with the chimney burn, which is kind of cool. But uh, this is what I did with the um, uh, the roof. I think there's a uh, it's a 20 degree pitch or 18 degree pitch. I forget which. I think it's right around there, 20 degrees. So basically, just cut your your end joints there and I came right up all the way across put some electric in and then the hard part was which I couldn't find online I'm like oh how do I how do I make this so it's sturdy there's the outside entrance to the door uh, decking system the dog used to run out over here and then I need to put a little bit of an extension here because you would fall off the deck. And I says, okay, well, I'll put an extension in here. So it would come out over here, and then he would go and do his business with the dog run over here. And uh, that roofing style is a, uh, a gambrel or a Dutch roof, uh, which I found plans online where I really didn't really need to do a heck of a lot of math trying to figure out the width and the heights. Um, so basically, you just plug in what you want to do. Uh, or, or a guesstimate of your um, lengths, I guess. See, that length is seven and a half feet, give or take. And the height was my height, which was, I have everything written down because it was a, two months ago when I built this. The height is six, six feet, eight inches. I'm shaking because it's cold out. <laughs> All right, here we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, yeah, the width is seven feet, 10 inches. The height is 6.8, and the walls are 34 inches. So 34 inches high, up and around, and it gave me that. And uh, I'll get to that in a little bit. And back to over here. So over here, I did uh, 24 inches on center. I did not use a level. I just basically just cut, measure, cut, measure, cut, measure, cut, because really this was a temporary thing. Just wanted to get this erected and have it uh, shelter out the elements relatively quickly. As you can see, <laughs> I got Denzel Washington over here with the equalizer. Uh, this is the billboard tarp that came, and uh, that's what I used. And I go over here, and here's the other side of it. Really, really cool. Okay, so what I did was here, because as you see it's a little windy, I was afraid that we do get, we're in, uh, I'm in Long Island, New York, so it gets pretty windy here in the winter time. So I was afraid that this thing would have blown over, so what I did was, as an extra precaution, where are they? I used Tapcons. Uh, there's a 5 inch Tapcons drilled into uh, the, the concrete patio, and the patio was 4 inches deep. So it just basically just blew right through. I think it was a uh, three-eighths of an inch of drill bit with a hammer drill and then uh, put those in with an impact gun. And there's, I think, eight of them. There's one there. There's another one over there. This was convenient. I put another one here, but it's not a top gun. It's just a lag bolt. And this happens to be a uh, piece of wood and it's cement. Another top con there. Oops, wrong way. Top con there, top con over there. There's another one over here. So it's overkill because when the wind starts blowing, this thing is just locked down. Uh, is there one there? There's one there, and there's one over there. So yeah, there's eight of them. And uh, over here, this deck really, it's it's really glued to the cement underneath. I had brickwork underneath that was falling apart and I says you know instead of sitting here doing all the masonry I'll just cover it with the with the wood so really the shelter is only just towed with screws right there it's just towed that's it that's that's what's holding this whole thing in on the on the back end over here it's really the weight 
So I figure this out. And this is just enough. So when I walk into the house, I don't bump my head, which is really nice. It's really cool. Uh, I really sealed up the uh, the window over there. There's a, um, if I walk back out, uh, gotta open up the door. Walk back out. I sealed up the window base as best as possible because I don't know if we were gonna get a blizzard this year, which we haven't. I didn't want anything blowing inside the shelter from this angle over here, so I needed to close that up. The height of the shelter, I was interested in trying to figure out, but the, the, total, the total peak height is seven feet nine inches from the, the end of the gable end to uh, the patio. And when we subtract that with the three and a half inches for the two by four that I used for the joist, we're uh, at a maximum of seven feet uh, six and a half. Uh, inches. So from down here, this is seven foot six inches from down here. So, and then it's all the way down like that. Okay, that's cool. So, um, I don't know what else I need to say with this. Let's see. I just really cool I just wanted that oh uh, the roofing the roofing was was sort of like I don't know what to do with the roofing I didn't want to go crazy with, with the roofing so what I did was I uh, just basically that's four feet so it's two feet on center right there for the, uh, the the walls so it's four feet gap there's another two foot right here another four foot and I was worried that the gaps were going to be too wide for the weight of the snow and so far we haven't gotten any real significant snowfall but the snowfalls that we did do is probably a good four inches with heavy 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 wet snow back in November and the vinyl um, the vinyl tarp material is super thick it's it's reinforced where are we? It's super thick and it's reinforced. It's kind of hard for me to actually zoom in on it, but let's see. Can we zoom in? Yeah, it's sort of like, like it's reinforced, so it's it's super robust, and um, it definitely has proved its strength in um, in snow weight. Now, despite despite that. It is noisy. Well, despite that it is a used tarp, you are going to get holes and nicks in it. And what I did was, I just ran around with some silicone 2 by GE. Basically bathroom caulk. And um, I just sealed up all the holes. You know, I circled them full the holes and, uh, and sealed up all the holes with the caulk caulk there and caulk there. I did try using Gorilla Tape. The Gorilla Tape does stick to this very, very well. Let's see if I can... Very well. And, um, but really it's not really waterproof. And, uh, that's that. Okay, so... The big thing was trying to mate the two shelters together so I wouldn't receive any leaks in between them. And I says, how am I gonna do this? So I figured out that if I actually meet the Gambrel Peak with the peak over here, which is simple enough, I just put a put a, a, a bracket or a ledge bracket with a pole, piece of foam to keep the uh, slack out of the uh, the tarp, and then I was able to just Put it right up over there to the other shelter and then fold it around and then use a series of screws inside and out to lock the two shelters together same thing over here oh, i'm shaking again it's cold out uh, same thing over here so when i actually oop around here 
the two shelters, basically you just find where you're going with the beam and lock it in with your screws. I don't know if I did any down there. I think I did one over there and another two over here. Uh, where are we? Up there. There's a screw there. So this, <laughs> trying to shake it, it just, it's just, it's just solid. It just, it's not, not going anywhere. Okay, we'll come back over here, outside. As you see, the snow just lands and falls right off the roof, right off the tarp. So this was kind of interesting, because it says, oh, you know what, if I sealed up everything with the cork, maybe I'll just do the seam with the cork. So that's what I did. I just went around with the seam and just buried the cork right into the seam, all the way up. And then the top, I just loaded up, I don't know if I can get, it, get the camera up here enough. I loaded up the cork in between, in where the peak is and just made sure that there was enough coverage in there. It's amazing that the cork gets so dirty, everything just sticks to it. That's the, you know, the op open part of the entrance over there. I just put some tape behind it and uh, sealed it with cork. And the same thing on the other side. Uh, also, same thing over here with all the screws. So all I did was just use screws while screwing. Son, doing a lot of screwing. And then the same thing with this. Just wrap it up. And what I did here was I put a uh, bought this separate place in town. It's, um, I forget what mill thickness this is, but this is just basically table. Um, table, clear table uh, protector vinyl. And I wanted to put that up there so uh, we had some extra light. The same thing on the sides here. We were afraid that uh, the dog was going to get spooked because it's so dark in here. This happens to be the uh, a Predator uh, vinyl that I got. And um, this, was, this whole thing here is seven seven foot 10 inches by 14 feet long. I was going to do 16, but uh, I don't know. I forget why I uh, needed to run it down. Oh, what I need to do is I need to take this down relatively quickly because uh, I can't get to my outside entrance. I need to move some equipment up and out of the basement and, um, well, I can't. So this part is coming down. Since I no longer have the dog anymore, I really don't entertain myself in here that much. So, um, the amount of wood that I spent, uh, I just went to a local contractor and just had them deliver it. I think the wood was, uh, four, 450 bucks or something like that with the delivery. The two tarps were uh, 80, 80 dollars or something like that, and it basically is the time. And it took me uh, three, four weekends, probably four weekends, in in conjunction of um, working at night, late night. So it really wasn't that bad. And I hid the gambrels, and then I used uh, OSB panel. Is cheap it's like $13 for a 4x8 sheet from Home Depot uh, I cut strips and uh, that's how I shored up the um, the spires and uh, they're uh, it's solid it's super solid and the same thing you know corked up some of the seams over here you know some seams they like to crack and this is this is thick stuff Plus it's printed, so it's you got the extra thickness on the print. So that's what I did. I made a temporary dog shelter with a temporary outside entrance. I say temporary because uh, it's coming down. And then I'll use the wood for something else. And that's... Uh, 
That's my shelter system. But really, when I was looking for what to do, it was really how to make this as sturdy as possible. Uh, for the back end. Because a lot of a lot of a lot of things, a lot of designs online, you look at like shelters or you look at uh, sheds. You don't have a higher door on one side and another door on this side. And what's really cool about this door is I got a neodymium magnet and I put a screw through it. And I put another neon Dio magnet and put the same screw through it and it matches up exactly the same so when I come home I could just and it just locks locks the door in and it's pretty it's pretty tight too whoop I almost tripped it's pretty tight the magnets and the screws meet almost exactly and uh when you open this thing back up, you can almost, you can hear it. Anyway, and for extra security, which is not really extra security, but basically you just put this down as a prowl, you know, so you just can't get to it from the outside. Not like you just walk around, but still, it's the wind really you want to keep the wind from blowing everything open this is really cool it has some strips of uh hdpe high density polyethylene i just cut some strips took the torch got them uh warm and then bent around to make a uh make a handle and then uh sanded down the uh the burrs on the side so i got two handles going with the screws you know, so this over here, you pull it, close, and that's it. Really, really cool. Same thing here, put a window. I just had a piece of plexiglass laying around. I basically chamfered the sides and put hot glue around there so it just wouldn't move. And then realized the hot glue really, I mean the hot glue that I had, it's not as, well, when it gets cold out, it gets brittle. So then I just used the caulking over here so I wouldn't have rain and snow and ice getting past the door. And that's this graphic from the other billboard. And the other billboard also had the be put there because I ran out of... Um, the billboard that was used for this shelter here. So later on, I'll show you the electric. The electric I put in a, uh, I think it was a, a $10 or $12 um, LED strip from eBay. And uh, that's wired into a uh, low voltage 12 volt light, uh, excuse me, power supply up in the soffit. So when I turn the light on from inside the house, it turns the light on for the outside. But since the light is built into the so into the soffit, obviously it's not going to shine in here. So I uh, says, okay, well I'll hide the 12 volts, 12 the 12 volt power supply up in the soffit, and then uh, I'll just run down some power wires, solder the power wires directly in onto the uh, the LED strip. LED strip has a self adhesive so it's like 12 feet of LED strip over here and then I ran down in series uh, some two conductor and I went over up over here and soldered some more LEDs with a strip Whoop. where are we here I drilled through my bracing plates Basically, right at the top there, I just put the drill right in there, and and now I got an LED strip going all the way down over here. And I used to have this put up over here, so it, it doesn't really stay. Again, temporary. 
And then once uh, I don't need this anymore, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pull that right out. So that's kind of cool that I can do that. And uh, later on this evening, I'll come out here. This time I'll wear some gloves so my hands don't freeze up and start shaking this camera like crazy. And um, I'll show you the uh, the light, which is kind of cool because I put a dimmer into it, so it could be uh, dimmed and and stuff like that. And a good place to leave the chairs for now. So, uh, so that's my shelter system. And um, it's gonna come down, and at least I have this video log that I can look at when it's years on yonder. It's really cool, you know, to see something built as temporary as this is and how simple as it is. I mean, I really didn't build anything, shell a, uh, a shed or anything like that. And like, hey, look, look what I built. You know, when people see this, they're impressed. Like, ah, oh, you're not taking this thing down. Yeah, I gotta go. It's gotta go. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but I might. Now this I put a clevis pin. Eh, eh, eh. Kicking this thing out. All right, I have to walk around. I can't exactly get back in there. Put a clevis pin in the uh, in the wood so it would, it would hold down the uh, the vinyl. I haven't really decided yet, but I'm thinking. You know, the door is 36 inches. It's 36 inches by 6 feet. So, when the door opens in, obviously you want to have the door open in because if it's snowing outside and you get like, I don't know, 12 inches of snow, you're not going to be able to open the door out. So, it's got to open in. So, if it opens in 36 inches, obviously I would need to remove the extension that I did with this decking system here. But... If I make the shelter, let's see, that's two, four, six feet out from the house for next year, and then put the door here. I don't think I'm going to clear, I'm not going to clear the deck. So I'm probably going to have to do it two, four, six, eight, make it eight feet, and put the door here. And the door will just about clear the uh, the deck that's if I wanted to put this up again for next year I would just basically save all the wood on that side or maybe just store store everything I mean just store that wall someplace in the garage or something like that you know and then bring it close in here for next year I don't know I haven't I haven't decided what I want to do but it's simple enough you know where I just unscrew take out the uh, the top cons yeah those are leaked there I'll tell you about the leak in a minute over here it would rain 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 go down the wall you could see it would rain last night it just hangs out so what I needed to do is I drilled some holes in the uh, and the, I guess those are expansion for the uh, the patio. This whole patio needs to be redone. I tried to tried to cover it with uh, some cement to try to seal it up a little bit, but it's really past due for a new one. Uh, that seemed to uh, let the the water drain. And what I did do was DAP chemical. DAP DAP chemical makes a. Uh, temporary caulking which is called peel and seal or seal and peel and you put it down and it goes in clear it goes down clear and what you can do is um, you could seal up stuff that's temporary and that basically sealed up the leak um, and I did that all the way around to help prevent the water from coming in here and freezing however any water that does come in here, even though it's cold outside, it actually stays pretty warm. I mean, it doesn't freeze at all. Um, but these Tapcons, 
they'll get unscrewed. And then when the wood's gone, I'll just uh, seal up the uh, cement with, uh, you know, some, some cement putty or something like that. You know, I'm not really too concerned because look at the patio. It's falling apart and it's cracking like crazy, so I'm not really too concerned about what cosmetics it looks like. More than likely the case, I'll probably just, just to extend more of the deck out. Um, oh, what else? There was something else too that I wanted to look at and actually video archive, but I can't remember right now. Okay, so here's part two of the shelter system. It's about uh, 2.30 in the afternoon. So this is what it looks like from the inside walking out the back door. And this is the inside. And what I did over here was just cover the other side there, or the, the, the side with, uh, with, I think this is just uh, Gorilla Tape. You know, just to prevent the stuff from blowing from the underside, the, uh, 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 from underneath the soffit, from blowing in from inside the house. And then the, uh, the electric being plumbed in from over here, over, over, uh, over from up in the, uh, the soffit and coming down up and around for the LED lighting. Uh, to prevent this thing from, from swaying, which really, this thing really doesn't really move. But an extra gasket system that I did between the house and the shelter, because the shelter is a floating, um, it, it's, it's not attached to the house, obviously, so it's a floating structure. Um, I gotta close this door. I used uh, pipe insulation. So just basically, I just shoved this in here between the house and the uh, and the shelter. There's some gaps here and there between the uh, the siding, but uh, it serves its purpose well and keeps the uh, the wind and the uh, and the snow like if we were ever gonna get a blizzard, um, it would prevent the snow from finding its way uh, into the shelter. So this is what it looks like in the daytime. It's uh, it's super bright in here. Yeah, you know, the sun with the white. You know, it's pretty bright. So, uh, you know, <laughs> pretty bright compared to uh, yesterday. It was uh, a dismal day with cloud cloudy skies. Oh, well, it's uh, pretty bright in here. So I wanted to actually say that um, the screws that I used were all Torx head screws, self-tapping, and I used GRK screws, really, really awesome screws. The design of them are actually really um, unique. They're expensive. They're hardened steel screws. Uh, the one on the right is three three inches. The one in the middle there is um, two and a quarter inches, and the one on the end is one in uh, I forget. It's like one in three eighths inches, and I used the one in three eighths inches for as I have larger heads. I use that to use those rather to uh, attach the tarp, and I use the two and a quarter inches for over here for locking of my plates. And some of them they do come up the other side just a little bit. Obviously, you know you can nick your hands on that, but they worked. They worked real well. And the three inch screws I used for my studs everywhere. And partially I did those because my drill or my socket driver is just a basic Milwaukee driver, 12 volts. And um, 
that's the model number there. It's a compact driver, nothing special with an enhanced battery pack on it. And that's what I used. I forget what it, the inch pounds it does. I think it's like, I don't know, it's small compared, compared to these, uh, these drivers now. So, you know, that's not an impact driver. It's just simple um, nut driver just goes right in or impact driver rather. It's not an impact driver. It's just a regular, regular driver. And uh, I built the whole shelter with that drill. So, you know, I recommend getting the uh, the enhanced battery. This way, you're you're not switching batteries every so often, you know. And uh, and that's that with the with the screws. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, so uh, in a little bit, when it gets darker out, I'll show you guys the electric, and uh, that's it for the shelter system. Okay, this is my last part of the video log here. Describe uh, what I did with the electric for inside, for the light and the LED strips. So let's use D strip there, and one that's illuminated for back there. It seems a little dim right now because I'm only operating at 20%. The lines that you see in the cameras, the pulse width modulation that you that the camera's picking up from the LEDs being dimmed. So really it's off and on a couple of hundred times a second and um, you can't see it with the eye but the camera will pick it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how that works. I bought a uh, a pulse width modulating dimming system and it's uh, operated by a wireless remote and with the remote you can uh, pick 25% brightness 50% brightness and 100% brightness you can see that the lines in the camera have gone away it's pretty 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 bright in here I mean these things these pump out a lot of a lot of lumens per LED and uh, it really lights up this whole place in here like like day almost so instead of keeping this so so bright because you can actually see it from the outside I'll go out there in a little bit we actually got some snow last night more like sleet that's basically what it looks like from the outside when the LEDs are at full power it's quite bright I don't want to advertise too much and that's what it basically looks like from the outside with the graphics <laughs> all right and we'll uh, dim this down to 50 percent and it is 25 percent and that's basically it for the electric it's a uh, pretty cool shelter system it's got LEDs it's, uh, it's waterproof to an extent what I did want to show actually is I got a drip there uh, let me crank these up I don't know if we could see that the drip isn't coming from there it's coming from there's a nail that's over here somewhere uh, there's a nail when this blows in the wind. This is actually snow on top of here. Yeah, the snow is pretty stuck on there. When the wind blows, this blows in and out. And where I lock the screws into the stud from the outside, it stresses the screw holes of the uh, where the tarp ends up going, uh, where the screw ends up going through the tarp. And uh, you get a couple of drips. I'm not too concerned. I mean, this whole this whole area is really, uh, really dry when it's raining. It's really cool, actually. And uh, and that's it. That's uh, that's the electric, and it's super bright, and it's completely temporary. And um, I need to take this down 
relatively uh, soon because I need to get access to my outside entrance, which is over there. Anyway, all right. So this is uh, this is my shelter system, and uh, thanks everyone for watching, and uh, hope you guys can build something uh, similar or equal to. Thanks. Take care.